Welcome to the first Drunken Confession, where Lara reveals how she became an artist, gets sidetracked a bit, takes you on a tour of her art studio, and shares some lesser-known benefits of red wine. Hi! Don't panic, I'm here. Actually, I'm Lara, and I've got all of my friends here. But I'll talk about the benefits of wine at the end of this video. And some of you might judge me at this point. You know, I didn't always like to drink. When I was in my teens, I thought, well, this kind of tastes bad, but at least it makes me popular with my friends. It helps me fit in. But when I was in my 20s, I was like, well, at least it helps me talk to the opposite sex. It also makes me warm and approachable. And now that I'm in my 30s, it's the only thing I like about being alive. I stole that joke. Why drunken confessions? Well, you asked for more of me. In fact, many times I woke up in a sweat with your words ringing in my head. Sell yourself, Lara. Sell yourself, woman. Sell yourself. Sell yourself. Sell yourself, Lara. And I finally realized that you're not here for my endless talent and art, but rather for my charming personality and good looks. That's good enough for me. Naturally, a shy, introverted person that I am, that I think I am, I know myself enough to be a much better company, even to myself after a couple of drinks. Doesn't make me a bad person. Self-knowledge is the most essential thing in life. And the sooner you accept yourself the way you are, the happier you'll be. Anyway, I've got wisdom to impart, I think. The sober version of me often omits to say for the fear of being judged, which is understandable, it's a human thing, also a childhood thing, and I'll get to that in a second. It's terrifying to put yourself out there. Well, not this version of me. I love me. And that's why drunk people are better people. Got one on my shirt. Well, here's a short history of the artist. In my youth, I was art inclined, but my mother never saw art as a way to make a living, more of a hobby. Such a classic cliche story, but it must be said so that you understand where I'm coming from. She was always afraid of what the neighbors might say. And it's tough to be an eccentric and to grow up like that. Always afraid of other people, afraid of standing out, as Alan Watts imparted his wisdom once. He deciphered this apprehension as a fear of being seen as a target. You know, when you're different, you stand out and you might get Shop. Perhaps this eccentric thing is a short person complex, but we're getting off track. Remember, I grew up in Romania, which is a country that is not known for its diversity and its openness. Well, not back then, but rather a hefty, ancient, wholesome country that holds on to its tradition and folklore and superstition and religion, you know what I mean? This might be a slight detour to the explanation, but sometimes I think of my mom's teachings as seen from a praise point of view, like a rabbit or a deer, on the lookout for the predator, I'm not getting seen and blending in with the environment. And that really doesn't let you be an individual. You're like a, a speck in a mass. You're not noticed. And that hurts when you're a small person. And I just realized that a couple of days ago in the shower, it was an epiphany. I just want to curl up into a ball somewhere and just die. And I realized that I can't live like a prey anymore. I've got to step into the skin of a predator. Because you see, my philosophy is that everyone is faking We're it. We're all figuring it out as we go along this thing called life. Nobody can describe life to you better than you can. And nobody is able to explain it to you better than you're able to understand it with your own senses. We often look out there to someone else to give you the green light, the okay. But the moment you realize that nobody has a clue over what's important or what life is all about, then you are indeed free. End of detail. After high school, I went to medical college, physical therapy to be more exact, because I was vaguely interested in the whole anatomy and biology thing, but most of all, I just wanted to leave home. Far, far away. Seven and a half hours by train. Long story short, I came to the States one summer with a work and travel visa, 
met my husband to be, had a daughter, and bought a house. Nine years ago, when we got the house, I started painting the walls. And at first, it was really lame. It was mostly silly doodles and self-expression farts, but they were good enough to compliment by some good-natured friends and family members who were just being nice or didn't know any better. So when my daughter went to first grade and I had more than five hours of free time on my hands, I started painting every single room in my house into a different world. I had a Pepperland room from the Beatles, a rainforest room for my daughter, a nightmare before Christmas room, an underwater room, a dragon, crystal cave, and an enchanted forest. It took just over two years to paint the whole house, and that was pretty much my apprenticeship in painting murals. YouTube videos and books really helped. Then I looked for commissions from people who would be my clients, and also I started painting canvases. And that was the moment where I really started to feel like an artist. I actually had an easel and I had some artist paints, not just contractor, you know, latex wall paints and a palette and all that fancy stuff. Not all artists lead a glorified lifestyle. Not yet. Sometimes being an artist is tough. Here we are, I still paint commissioned canvases and murals for clients. Hint, hint. And maybe I'll do these drunken confessions once a month if you're digging them. I want to talk to you more about artist related topics like artist and anxiety and being an introvert and how do you get past the feeling of being a fraud and other sort of psychology related topics rather than art techniques. Let me know if you're interested in that. We can do a Q&A one day. So you ask for a studio tour. Sober me would frown upon this but I've got to be honest right? I've got to be honest and vulnerable because that's what this is all about. Here's my temporary art studio which is a corner of our garage more like a wee little table some lights and a three feet by seven feet of space to sit down at an easel and paint. It's kind of like a New York City studio apartment really. You can touch all of the walls with your two hands without having to change positions. I can paint, shower, cook, all from the same spot? How you say, minimalistic? Who came up with that minimalistic crap? Probably a poor person. I do believe that soon we'll have the space for a proper art studio and an art gallery. All you need is to dream about it and it will happen for you. It is law. Do you know what time it is right now? It's time for wine benefits. Yeah! The first seriously underrated benefit of red wine is its mind-numbing quality. That is essential ingredient to human evolution and the growth of civilization, which is the development of human society. Libations in sacrifices, a shot of courage between a big battle, the erotic diplomacy of a king's court, all were looped by red wine or wine. Its mind-numbing qualities do take the edge of establishing a human population population of over 7 billion people. It also has health benefits. The third underrated benefit of red wine is its ability to make cheese and chips taste totally amazing. In fact, it is almost possible to conceive that the very apex in our advances in civilization is the ability to sit on the couch, crack open a bottle of natural red wine, a bag of chips and cheese while enjoying a Netflix show. And it's the gift that keeps on giving. Now Another underrated benefit of natural red wine is its ability to smooth over your relationships with your friends, neighbors, or estranged family members by presenting it as a gift for past wrongdoings or the willingness to reconnect, perhaps. So this was our first drunken confession. I do plan to make more well-thought confessions for the future. So if you have a topic that you would like me to talk about, please do share. I would love to hear that and basically all the things that I feel as an artist. So if you want me to talk about anything in particular, please do let me know in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Bye! Uh, Maybe it wasn't a good idea to drink and make videos.